Hey everyone and welcome back to this Wikipedia. In this episode we're going to be doing a brake fluid flush on the Nissan Cube and I'm going to show you how to use one of these manual hand pump tools uh, rather than having somebody else pump the brakes for you. Uh, the reason I opted for this is it's a lot easier. Uh, you obviously don't have to yell back and forth at somebody else to pump the brakes and hold. It's a bit more accurate as well because you'll actually know how much pressure is in the line as you're going because uh, it does have a little pressure gauge on the back so at the moment it does actually have a reading and that's probably because of atmospheric pressure uh, but anyway we'll get to that in a minute uh, so first thing you're going to need to do is get your car jacked off the ground and get the wheels off uh, while you've got the wheels off it's also a good time just to see what the wear is like so check your little tread wear markers and if need be it's the perfect time to do a wheel rotation if it looks like you're gonna need it uh, in this case everything looks pretty even so I probably won't bother rotating the tires for the time being Uh, all right, so first thing you need to do, just grab a light. Uh, locate the reservoir for your master cylinder, uh, which is just here on the cube. Make sure you've got the correct brake fluid for your car as well. Uh, it'll usually say on the cap, otherwise check your manual. There's usually a little filter sits in top as well. Actually just put that somewhere where it's not going to get dirty. Uh, and keep in mind brake fluid is corrosive so it will eat paint along with a lot of other things. Probably flesh, skin I should say. Flesh sounds a bit macabre. Uh, so what we're going to do first is just drain out the excess fluid in the reservoir uh, and then top it up with the fresh fluid. This saves us sucking all the old fluid th through the system. Um, you only have to do pretty much whatever's left in the brake lines. So it saves a bit of time. Let's get started on this. So, there's a few fittings. Uh, this side just fits straight onto your pump. It's got a little barb fitting on the end. And then you've got uh, basically your little waste container, so all the brake fluid that you suck out will end up in the container. And then on this end, you've got another barb fitting and the kit does come with a bunch of different fittings. So depending on what uh, your bleeder screw looks like, there should be a fitting to work on it. Let's just go back up here. So first thing I'm just going to do is suck out the excess fluid, so put that end in there. Unfortunately with the cube it's hard to get very far into the reservoir at all, but it's still going to make things a bit easier. So as soon as you start pumping you'll see fluid running in. Yeah, as I said with the cube it's very hard because you can't really get very far into the reservoir. Let's place the camera in here. It doesn't look like we're going to get more than that out. But at least 
that'll save us having to pull that much fluid through the black brake lines. Keep wanting to save Blake. Blake's got new face. Other thing you'll need is a container to drain the old brake fluid into. Now, as I said, it is corrosive, so it will eat a lot of things, including some plastics. Uh, I'm just going to use an old container that I already had lying around. Uh, but if you don't have that, uh, best to use probably a glass jar with a lid. Uh, you don't want this stuff going everywhere. And you also don't want to knock your container over, so just grab the old fluid. Empty it out into your container. And just be sure to close everything back up. Alright, so most important thing is to keep this reservoir topped up. Otherwise, you'll just end up pulling air through your brake lines and it'll be a big waste of time. Alright, we are pretty much full. We are very full. Okay, so once you've topped up your reservoir, try not to drop any brake fluid. Okay, so now the reservoir's topped up. Just replace the cap just lightly. You don't, don't actually need to seal anything. It just needs to be on there to stop any crap falling in. Okay, so when you start bleeding, always start from the wheel furthest away from the reservoir. So in this case, it'll be the rear passenger side. Uh, I'll just have to move this crap out of the way. Now, you'll need to locate your bleeder screw. Um, so you'll see the brake line coming in here, and over here there's a little sort of rubber cap. Um, so this covers the, the nipple for the bleeder screw. Um, yeah, there's a little nipple cover. Uh, these don't have tassels coming off them, so they're a bit trickier to locate, but I'm sure you'll be able to find them. And then you'll see you've got the bleeder screw, uh, and there's basically a little a nut here. So once you loosen that brake fluid will be able to flow out through the nozzle um, and we're going to attach our little pump to this so we're actually sucking the brake fluid out um, because if you don't have some kind of suction pressure you risk actual air going back in the other way which means you'll end up with air in your brake lines and you'll be worse off than you started probably uh, so with these you need a um, a ring spanner or a box and wrench. All right, that's an eight mil. So get that over there, and then attach the pump. 
pump to the nipple. Um, now before you actually open the bleeder screw, just give this thing a few pumps. Just so you can see whether there's any air escaping. Um, so it should just hold whatever you pump it up to. So it looks like we are good to go. Try and do it so you can see everything that's going on. So once you open your bleeder screw, you'll see the pressure in the pump will start to drop and hopefully the old brake fluid will start to come out through the line. Um, so remembering that the atmospheric pressure was somewhere around uh, 300 so whatever you do just make sure it doesn't drop below that because obviously that's when you've lost vacuum pressure so you risk allowing air to get back into your brake lines. So just to open the bleeder screw just a little bit so it starts dropping and you can see the brake fluid coming out. Just give it a pump just to keep the suction pressure there. And then all you need to do is just wait until you see your new brake fluid coming through. Um, this is why it's a good idea to try and get brake fluid that's different a different color to what you've already got in your vehicle because you'll be able to tell as soon as that new stuff comes through you'll be able to see it almost straight away uh, I haven't drained too much obviously keep an eye on this too because if you drain too much in one hit you'll risk sucking air into your brake, brake fluid reservoir and then you'll be starting all over again. But yeah, this is maybe a little bit slower than somebody pumping your brakes. Um, but at the same time, you're not relying on somebody else to get everything right. colors starting to change. I'm just going to close that off and you can see that there is a tinge of blue. It looks like at the moment we're a little bit mixed with the old brake fluid so I'm just going to suck out a little bit more. Just pump everything right up. Open the bleeder valve again. Just suck out just a bit more just to make sure we've got all that old stuff out and any air bubbles that might be in the brake line. So it's looking pretty blue now so I think that's going to be enough. So tighten up your bleeder screw. You don't have to do it insanely tight. It's only a tiny screw so you do not want to break it. Um, and once that's tightened up you can pop this off and then just tilt it up a little bit just to try and get all the excess brake fluid in the pipe down into your container and that's it the first one's done so all you have to do is repeat that process starting from the opposite rear wheel and then we'll go to the front passenger side because that's the furthest away from the reservoir at the front and then the driver side which is obviously the closest and obviously as you do this make sure you keep this fairly empty you don't want to get it too full because it'll actually suck fluid back up into your pump and make sure you've got the reservoir topped up at all times you don't want to risk sucking your air back into your fuel lines. Um, so yeah, we'll move on to the rest of the wheels and we'll be done.
All right, so now that you've done all four wheels, uh, only thing left to do is put your nipple covers back on. Um, make sure that's all done. Obviously, if you've been checking your fluid the whole time, that's gonna to be topped up. So just make sure you put the cover back on the reservoir. Um, and that's about it. Throw everything back together, take it for a test drive around the block. Uh, if you still have a sort of spongy feeling in your brakes, then you may have accidentally sucked air in and you'll have to do it again. Um, but if not, you should now have some nice fresh brake, brake fluid in your lines. Um, otherwise, yeah, pop the covers back off, suck those nipples dry and get that fresh fluid squirting out. Um, that's all we're gonna do on this one. Thanks again for watching this Wikipedia. I hope this has helped you out. Uh, I should mention that this little kit cost around, I think it was 25 bucks off eBay. So it's certainly worth it. It'll pay itself off. Well, it already has paid itself off. Um, and you get to learn something while you're doing it. So, you know, why not? Thanks for watching. Please hit subscribe and uh, hit the like button. You can leave me a comment down below. Thanks.